Good evening and welcome. My name is Craig Irish. I'm the coordinator for the Sacramento County Academic Decathlon. On behalf of the County Office of Education, I want to welcome you to the 2021 Academic Decathlon Award Ceremony. Tonight's the culmination of months of hard work for all of you decathletes who are watching. You spent countless hours preparing for the competition, and tonight we honor each of you and your accomplishments. I also want to thank our coaches for all of their work preparing all of you decathletes for this year's competition. With distance learning and teaching all day and creating things that are new this year, it would have been really easy for you to say no to the decathlon. So I want to thank you for sticking with the decathlon and making it possible for your students this year. I know you're anxious to hear this year's results, but before we do, let's take a look at our teams. At this time, I'd like to introduce our Sacramento County Superintendent of Schools, Dave Gordon, to say a few words. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 41st Annual Sacramento County Academic Decathlon Awards. It's an honor to be with you, even if it's virtually. We wish we could share this celebration with you in person because this is a wonderful recognition of success and hard work. This has been an especially challenging time for us all. The Catholics, the COVID-19 restrictions have made everything difficult and we've all had to adjust. Because of the restrictions, you have not been in school in person. You had to practice virtually and compete virtually. Yet despite all the challenges you have persevered, you still display teamwork, collaboration, and mental toughness. So congratulations on a job well done. It is so gratifying for us to shine the spotlight on students worthy of recognition. And today's decathletes are surely tomorrow's community leaders, teachers, artists, engineers, and much more. Students and coaches, your dedication and accomplishments also are so inspiring to us. You all put in many hours of hard work with our decathletes. Thank you so much. I know everyone is eager to learn the results of this year's competition, and I am too. But even though I'm the county superintendent, they don't even tell me. But before I continue, I want to thank program coordinator Craig Irish and his great team for planning and overseeing this fun and exciting event. I also want to thank the many volunteers who made this program work especially those of you who served as judges. Thank you, thank you, volunteers, for giving of your time so our students could participate. Finally, so much of this program's excitement would not be possible without Safe Credit Union, and I want to give them special thanks. We are very fortunate to have Safe as our academic decathlon sponsor again this year. SAFE again has graciously provided $10,000 in scholarships for our top decathletes. This generous gesture proves what a great commitment SAFE continues making to our young people and to our community. SAFE also sponsored several individual school teams, allowing them to participate in the decathlon. So thank you, thank you, Safe Credit Union, for all you do to support not just education, but so many other causes throughout our community. And at this time, it's my pleasure to welcome my good friend and Safe President and CEO, Dave Roten, to say a few words. To Dave and Safe, again, thanks for being such an integral part of this wonderful event. Thank you, Dave. And hello, everyone. Well, congratulations to all the winners and to all of you who have per participated in this year's Academic Decathlon. There's no doubt this past year has been a challenging year. From having to do all your work remotely, uh, 
and that's even made more difficult when you're having to participate in teams and working together and learning new technologies to make all that happen. Congratulations on your success in reaching this point and your success with the Academic Decathlon. SAFE is so proud to be a part of this program. The Academic Decathlon represents the very best of our educational system and what it does to all of you, the students that participate. One of the great parts of participating in this program is my opportunity to share with uh, the folks who earn the highest honors a scholarship for their great work. And while we're, we can't be together this year, I still am thrilled to be able to offer those scholarships to all of those students who achieved uh, that high level. At SAFE, philanthropy, uh, a major pillar of our philanthropy is education. And we do that, and I want to do that because education is so important to our communities. Because through education, students, just like all of you, achieve great levels of capability and success and responsibility. And all those qualities are so critically important as you graduate on to your next level of education or to the workplace. And it takes that transition for students coming out of high school, going on to college, going into the workplace, that drives the economic success of our communities. As you become the entrepreneurs, the scientists, the teachers, the business people in our community that drive economic success. I know that education is the foundation for creating really fulfilling career paths for all of you and for your future financial well-being. So congratulations again on your success with the Ac Academic Decathlon and all the best to all of you in your futures. Thank you. Thanks, Dave, and thanks, Safe Credit Union, for sponsoring the Academic Decathlon. Now it's my pleasure to introduce this year's virtual Master of Ceremonies. Kevin Riggs is a Senior Vice President with Randall Communications, a public affairs firm here in Sacramento. For nearly 17 years, he served as an Emmy award-winning political reporter for KCRA TV. He now serves as the station's political analyst and also writes a blog called The Riggs Report. Kevin is a native Californian and the father of two daughters and his wife works as a teacher in the San Juan Unified School District. When Kevin is not spending time restoring Ford Mustangs in his garage or traveling, he's spending time with his grandkids. Thank you, Kevin, for your kindness in serving as our MC for this year's awards. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the program. It's always rewarding to see students get recognized for all of their hard work during this uh, year, as well as the accomplishments and the support of their family as they go through this process. Uh, we're obviously doing this remotely. We've gotten somewhat used to that. It's not the same as being in person, but we thought it was important to honor the students. And so now, time to present the awards. Please remember we are awarding gold medals in first place, silver second place medals, and then bronze third place medals for all three categories, honor, scholastic, and varsity. There will be a minimum of three bronze, three silver, and three gold medals for each event. And in the case of ties, additional medals will be awarded. Bronze medalists will be displayed first, followed by silver medalists, and then finally, the gold medalists. So let's get started. The first online event students took part in this year was the essay event. Students had a choice of three essay prompts to write on. One choice asked students to describe the personal relationships discussed in the poem for Ethel Rosenberg. The second choice asked students to discuss the ideologies of the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. The third choice related to the science curriculum and asked students to explain in what ways the Earth is affected by the moon cycle. The essay medal winners are the bronze medal winners, Jackson Weedle, McClatchy, Priya Shaw, Bella Vista, Evelyn Nash, Bella Vista. The silver medal winners, Rena Liu, Vista Del Lago, Will Tushensky, Christian Brothers, Jax Owens, Bella Vista. 
gold medal winners, Abigail Wagner, Pleasant Grove, Shreya Papula, Miraloma, Nivrithi Sudhir Kumar, Vista Del Lago. This year's online format caused coaches, students, and county coordinators to get a bit creative and to hold the interview event in Zoom breakout rooms. Last Saturday, the Cathletes took part in a five to seven minute interview by a panel of judges. The Cathletes were judged on delivery, voice, language usage, and nonverbal language. They were also judged on content such as listening and answering skills and overall effectiveness of the information provided and the manner in which it was communicated. The interview medal winners this year are the bronze medal winners, Anthony Lamb, Bella Vista, Caprice Leach, Bella Vista, Tatiana Ahola, Vista Del Lago, Nivrithi Sudhir Kumar, Vista Del Lago. The silver medal goes to Sophia Perez Lanza, St. Francis, Priya Shaw, Bella Vista, Evelyn Nash, Bella Vista. The gold medal winners, Patrick Cahill, Christian Brothers, David Poiras, El Camino, Jax Owens, Bella Vista. This year's speech event also took place online. We had over 170 students present their speeches in breakout rooms last Saturday. Now, the speech event required the students to deliver a four-minute prepared speech on a topic of their choice. Then, after presenting their prepared speech, they were given a minute to pick one of three topics and then present a two-minute impromptu speech to a panel of judges. The speech medal winners are... The bronze medal winners, Alice Gao, Folsom. Saba Syed, Miraloma, Nivrithi Sudhir Kumar, Vista Del Lago. The silver medal winners, Sophia Perez Lanza, St. Francis, Brianna Bonite, Bella Vista, Luke Tanton Tran, Folsom. The gold medal winners, Troy Osborne, Pleasant Grove, Will Tushinsky, Christian Brothers, Evelyn Nash, Bella Vista. There is no better way of illustrating the strengths and talents of the students today than to witness what they do. On this program, we'll have a chance to hear the speeches from our top three highest scoring decathletes in speech. We will hear from one of those decathletes now, and then later in the program, we'll hear from the other two. Troy Osborne from Pleasant Grove High School will present his speech first. When I was 16, I started stealing drugs for my mom. That creates a pretty bad impression of me, doesn't it? How about this one? Most of my closest friends have seriously considered or attempted suicide. Or what about, my parents have hated each other for so long that I can hardly remember a time that they didn't. I can only imagine the images of me that you have in your heads right now. Hold on to that image. Remember it. Notice how it feels, because it's about to change. You see, I could have started the speech with three very different statements. I am an Eagle Scout, the highest rank a Boy Scout can earn. By the end of the year, I will have taken a total of 10 advanced placement classes and 13 AP tests. This time next year, I'll be at a top 10 liberal arts college nationwide. Now, these statements present a pretty different view of me, right? They paint me as a bright young man with his whole life ahead of him. Those first few, on the other hand, did not. According to them, I'm someone you don't really want your kids to be around. So which is it? Who am I, the good or the bad? Let's hold off on that question for a bit. Psychoanalytic psychology provides us a look into the mind of a young child. In particular, it describes a peculiar behavior called splitting in which young children adopt entirely good or entirely bad views of people and objects around them. For example, the vacuum is idealized as entirely bad, while an iPad might be entirely good. The child's own mother might be entirely good until she de denies her child something that they want, at which point she flips and becomes entirely bad. This period of a child's life, as parents will come to know, is characterized by lots and lots of crying, as children flip rapidly between these good and bad views. The struggle only ends when a child is able to understand that people and things can be both good and bad. Splitting is generally outgrown by the time one reaches adulthood, thankfully. But weirdly enough, sometimes the behavior persists into a person's mature life. 
Splitting can be seen quite clearly in people with borderline personality disorder, depression, for example. Weirder still, entire societies participate in splitting, including and especially our own. Celebrities are all good, prisoners are all bad, and no one has neutral views on our politicians nowadays, right? Odd, right? We as individuals have outgrown this behavior long ago, but we as a society continue to adopt these all-or-nothing views. Our task, then, is to avoid the dangers of splitting, and those dangers are very real. Nowhere is this more prominent than in our current political situation. I mean, heck, I thought things were bad back in November, when I wrote the speech during the election. If only I had known, right? Just goes to show, I guess. Regardless, it's clear now more than ever that this societal splitting helps no one. So what can we do to stop it? I'd like to return now to that question I posed just a few short minutes ago. How is it possible that I can be such a good person and such a bad person at the same time? Well, the truth is that everyone is. No one is either all good or all bad. And I can only imagine what the world would look like if we just took that to heart. Thank you. Prior to competition day, the Sacramento County Office of Education held an art competition. Artists were asked to submit artwork that they felt was representative of this year's theme, the Cold War. Now, we had a great selection of artwork to choose from. Some of them are in the online program. The winning artwork is used for the academic decathlon poster, t-shirts, and other printed material. We would like to honor this year's overall winner of the academic decathlon art competition, and this year's winner is... Louise Moore from St. Francis High School. The artwork titled A Cold Gaze features a U.S. and Soviet eye peeking out from some blinds. It's a great representation of the suspicion that was evident during the Cold War era. The art portion of the competition focused on 18 works of art representing this year's theme. Now, these works reflect the division of the globe into capitalist and communist cultural spheres and reflect the ideologies of each sphere. Included were a wide variety of mediums, including paintings, drawings, and photography. This year's art medal winners are... The bronze medal winners, Alice Gao Folsom, Caprice Leach, Bella Vista, Victoria Ojukwu, Pleasant Grove, Tatiana Ahola, Vista Del Lago, and Katherine Peterson, Vista Del Lago. The silver medal goes to Shayna Rahman, Vista Del Lago, Juliet Zhang, Vista Del Lago, Ashna Kambampati, Vista Del Lago, and Evelyn Nash, Bella Vista. Gold medal winners, Erica Huang, Folsom, Jaslyn Hock, Vista Del Lago, Olivia Langben, Folsom. The mathematics curriculum and test questions covered three connected areas of mathematics, general mathematics, geometry, and introductory calculus. The mathematics medal winners are the bronze medal winners, Madeline Lee, St. Francis, Logan Tiska, Christian Brothers, Catherine Bowie, Pleasant Grove. The silver medal winners, Peter Nelson, Mira Loma, Trami Lynn, Sheldon, Jaslyn Hawk, Vista Del Lago, David Poiras, El Camino, Nivrithi Sudhir Kumar, Vista Del Lago. The gold medal winners, Troy Osborne, Pleasant Grove, Priya Shah, Bella Vista, Luke Tanton Tran, Folsom. The music section covers basic elements of music theory, such as pitch, rhythm, and harmony. It also examined a variety of musical works, ranging from songs to symphonies that played a part in this complicated era. Some of the selected works include songs like Porgy and Bess, It Ain't Necessarily So, and A Survivor from Warsaw by Arnold Schoenberg. This year's music winners are... The bronze medal winners, Shana Rahman, Vista Del Lago, Madison Martin, Christian Brothers, Catherine Bowie, Pleasant Grove. The silver medal winners, Rena Liu, Vista Del Lago, Caprice Leach, Bella Vista, Ashna Kambampati, Vista Del Lago, Nivrithi Sudhir Kumar, Vista Del Lago. The gold medal winners, Erica Huang, Folsom, Jaslyn Hock, Vista Del Lago, Chloe Van Sickle, Bella Vista, 
and Evelyn Nash, Bella Vista. The social science section focused on the Cold War. The Catholics studied the intense military, political, and economic rivalry that erupted between the United States and the Soviet Union from 1946 to 1991. This all-consuming competition touched everything from musicians, art, and athletes to science, technology, and space. The social science medal winners are the bronze medal winners, Caitlin Lee, Folsom, Shana Rahman, Vista Del Lago, Will Tushinsky, Christian Brothers, Nivrithi Sudhir Kumar, Vista Del Lago. The silver medal winners, Alice Gal, Folsom, Rena Liu, Vista Del Lago, Jaslyn Hock, Vista Del Lago, and Evelyn Nash, Bella Vista. The gold medal goes to Erica Huang, Folsom, Ashna Kambampati, Vista Del Lago, Olivia Langbin, Folsom. At this time, we'd like to continue showcasing our top speeches from this year's competition by presenting another one of the highest scoring speeches. Please welcome to the program, Sophia Perez Lanza from St. Francis High School. 2020, as Charles Dickens said, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Well, let's be honest, 2020 was mostly just the worst of times, but I think we've learned a lot from that unprecedented year. For example, as I was sitting in the car one day, listening to NPR on the radio, I heard this fascinating story about social interaction. They were discussing this term called cuffing, which comes from handcuffs, and it refers to when people who would usually not be in a relationship tie themselves to a partner during the winter months. Now, I'm only 15 years old. I've never dated anyone but I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to feel like you're handcuffed to someone. So I want to learn why people would want this type of relationship, and I decided to do some more research. It turns out the answer is actually pretty simple, but since I've lived in Sacramento my whole life, this was kind of a weird idea for me to wrap my head around. So basically, in other areas, it actually gets cold in the winter, and it gets so cold that people avoid going outside and they want someone to spend their time with. There's been some debate as to whether or not cuffing is just some silly urban legend or if it actually has some science to back it up. Well, Matt Lundquist, a relationship psychotherapist based in New York, said that quote, in moments of fear and panic, we grab onto the safest person around us, end quote. And he said that he observed a similar phenomenon after the 9-11 terrorist attacks in the United States. Now, it is clear that social interaction is vital, but during these months of social isolation, social distancing, and quarantine, it's been hard to interact with loved ones. Well, that's why some people have been getting creative and thinking of new ways to reach out to their neighbors. For example, a couple of months ago, during a very strict lockdown in Spain, I got a text message from my aunt who lives in Madrid. She said that at 8 o'clock every night, everyone would turn on their TVs to a certain channel where they would play a song, and then everyone would step out into their balconies and sing the song together. She shared a video of this, and it was truly inspiring to hear hundreds of voices singing in unison into the night sky. My aunt lives alone, so she would look forward every night to 8 o'clock when she got to sing with her neighbors because she felt like she wasn't alone anymore. The great news is, these magical moments haven't just been happening in Madrid. Similar videos have been popping up around Spain, Italy, and around the world. For example, some neighbors have been playing musical instruments and singing popular songs together. Other neighbors have been reciting poetry to each other out of their apartment balconies. Now, over the past few months, everyone has been struggling with social isolation and many other problems. But as Charles Dickens said in his very first novel, there are some dark shadows on the earth, but its lights are stronger in the contrast. And I think we can all do a better job of reaching out and being a light in someone else's shadow. Thank you. This year's science topic focused on an introduction to astronomy. 
In keeping with the curricular theme of the Cold War, this year's science also included the space race between the U.S. and Soviet Union. Students learned how this period marked significant expansion in humanity's capabilities for space exploration, motivated by a competition for superiority between two global superpowers. The science medal winners are the bronze medal winners, Rena Liu, Vista Del Lago, Sheridan Love, Sheldon, Luke Tanton Tran, Folsom. The silver medal winners, Alice Gao, Folsom, Ashna Kambampati, Vista Del Lago, Nivrithi Sudhir Kumar, Vista Del Lago. The gold medal winners, Erica Huang, Folsom, Shana Raman, Vista Del Lago, Jaslyn Hawk, Vista Del Lago, Evelyn Nash, Bella Vista. The economics curriculum covered introductory micro and macroeconomics. In keeping with this year's Cold War theme, the economics section also touched on topics such as the Marshall Plan for post-war recovery, NATO and the Warsaw Pact, and the economics of the Soviet-American arms race. This year's economics medalists are the bronze medal winners, Erica Huang, Folsom, Peter Nelson, Miraloma, Shreya Papula, Miraloma, Olivia Langben, Folsom. The silver medal winners, Troy Osborne, Pleasant Grove, Jason Gatam, Sheldon, and Jax Owens, Bella Vista. And the gold medal winners, Alice Gao, Folsom, Ashna Kambampati, Vista Del Lago, Catherine Bowie, Pleasant Grove, Luke Tanton Tran, Folsom. The language and literature content focused on this year's novel, The Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. In, in addition to the novel, decathletes were also tested on their knowledge of selected shorter works, such as There Will Come Soft Rains by Ray Bradbury, Talking World War III Blues by Bob Dylan, and the John F. Kennedy Sword of Damocles speech at the United Nations. The language literature medal winners are The bronze medal winners, Anthony Lamb, Bella Vista, Alice Gao, Folsom, Erica Huang, Folsom, Brianna Bonight, Bella Vista, Evelyn Nash, Bella Vista. The silver medal winners, Abigail Wagner, Pleasant Grove, Juliet Zhang, Vista Del Lago, Priya Shaw, Bella Vista, Caprice Leach, Bella Vista, Jaslyn Hawk, Vista Del Lago, Olivia Langbin, Folsom, Nivrithi Sudhir Kumar, Vista Del Lago. The gold medal winners, Caitlin Lee, Folsom, Logan Tiska, Christian Brothers, Shreya Papula, Miraloma, Tatiana Ahola, Vista Del Lago. At this time, we'll hear from our final highest scoring decathlete in speech. Please welcome to the program, Will Tushinsky from Christian Brothers High School. The death and destruction that the COVID-19 pandemic has caused has been absolutely undeniable. However, I've taken this newly found free time that quarantine has allotted me, and really used it to take a deeper look and reevaluate what I find important in my own life. Most recently, this has been my Christian faith. For a while now, ever since middle school, I've had a few problems or disagreements with my faith here and there, but I just typically swept it under the rug. I realized that these initial qualms I might have had were a bit too fundamental to be ignored. So I decided to do some soul searching. With the help of my world history class and my own desire to learn, I researched most religions of the world from Judaism to Zoroastrianism. It was during this time that I also finally caved and downloaded the entertainment app TikTok, notorious for its horrifyingly accurate for you page. After a few hours of use, I began seeing videos both serious and comedic in nature about relatable situations for anyone in the Middle East or what it really means to be Muslim. Pretty soon, I began seeing Arabic words and phrases that I didn't quite recognize. So I went out of my way to research each and every one of them. And I can say that my Arabic's gotten pretty good as a result. Even YouTube decided to hop in on the fun and recommend me videos about Christians who converted from Christianity to Islam. I decided I needed a more personal outlook on the situation, so I reached out to a friend in Qatar, Amin. I said, hey, Amin, I'm 
genuinely interested in Islam. Is there anything you can do to help me or even, you know, tell me where to start? He simply said that Islam is when you're not allowed to have fun. It was only when I told him to astaghfirullah, meaning to repent before God, on a picture where he said he was willing to risk it all to try the pork McRib, that he realized that I was serious. We talked a lot about practicing the religion. You see, in Christianity, I felt perfectly content going to church twice a year on Easter and Christmas. Yet Islam felt like an everyday endeavor. I even had to download an app, Muslim Pro, to help me keep track of times of when to pray and which prayers to say. I really felt like I was earning my way to a better life. My fascination and interest in Islam really culminated when an Islamic Institute visited our school. The student speakers spoke about how welcoming the community was, even to newcomers like myself, and how confident Islam made them feel. Speaking with an imam, even in a large group, was so inspiring that I scheduled a private meeting to possibly talk about conversion. Though at the moment, conversion is still up in the air as I continue to research the religions of the world, I'm confident in my newly found faith in God. Whether I do end up calling him God, Allah, or something else entirely, I'm optimistic in my search of true faith. Thank you. It's important, of course, to recognize the hard work put forth by all of our decathletes. We now present the top scoring team member from each school. We will also present a safe credit union top scoring team member scholarship in the amount of $100 to each of the top scoring team member. The top scorers on each team represent some of the finest students their schools have to offer, and we salute them. Here are our top scoring members from each team. The top scoring team members, Aaron Lee, Bella Vista, Patrick Cahill, Christian Brothers, Joshua Potratz, El Camino, Allison Kelleher, Elk Grove, Alice Gow, Folsom, Jackson Weedle, McClatchy, Oscar Lewis, Mira Loma, and Troy Osborne, Pleasant Grove. Matthew Wynn, Sheldon, Madeline Lee, St. Francis, Rena Liu, Vista Del Lago. Our next award is the Team Leadership Award. The Catholics receiving this award distinguish themselves by displaying outstanding leadership skills in support of the team's spirit and success. The recipients of the Team Leadership Award are Team Leadership Award, Shivanshi Shivesh, Vista Del Lago, Anthony Lamb, Bella Vista, Caitlin Lee, Folsom, Troy Osborne, Pleasant Grove, Zachary Dong, Christian Brothers, Madeline Lee, St. Francis, Shreya Papula, Miraloma, Hufsa Ezatula, Sheldon. Tori Zabo, El Camino, Allison Kelleher, Elk Grove, Harper Johnston, McClatchy. At this time, we'd like to recognize a group of students who demonstrate what it really means to work as a team. As schools prepare each year for the competition, they're allowed to have only nine people on the team. However, each school is allowed to have additional decathletes who study and prepare. They do that all year long and then are ready to fill in if necessary. Here in Sacramento, additional decathletes may participate alongside their team members in all of the events except for the Super Quiz. These decathletes are not officially eligible for medals, but we wanted to publicly recognize their outstanding achievement. They pushed their teammates toward excellence. We'd like to recognize the top 10 highest scoring additional decathletes in order from 10th to first place. Top scorers, additional decathletes, Meghna Sarawat, Vista Del Lago, Savannah Kesmo, Vista Del Lago, Abirami Ramakrishnan, Vista Del Lago, Sydney Yu, Vista Del Lago, Hilary Chu, Christian Brothers, Avni Duda, Vista Del Lago, Shrujana Pulori, Vista Del Lago, Radha Adu Samali, Folsom, Michelle Zhang, Vista Del Lago, and Lila Gonzalez, Pleasant Grove. Super decathletes are the students who've achieved the highest cumulative scores in all 10 events in each of their respective categories, honors, scholastic, and varsity. These are the students who typically have medals clanking as they come on the stage back in the days when we would do this in person. This year's super decathletes are Super decathletes, bronze medal winners, Erica Huang, Folsom, Shreya Papula, Mira Loma, Olivia Langben, 
Folsom. Silver medal winners, Rena Liu, Vista Del Lago, Ashna Kambampati, Vista Del Lago, Evelyn Nash, Bella Vista. The gold medal winners, Alice Gao, Folsom, Jaslyn Hock, Vista Del Lago, Nivrithi Sudhir Kumar, Vista Del Lago. At this time, we'd like to announce the top scoring teams from eighth through sixth place. The teams are the top scoring teams. Eighth place, Sheldon High School. Seventh place, Mira Loma High School. Sixth place, St. Francis High School. Now on to announcing the top five teams. The fifth highest scoring team from the 2021 competition is the fifth place team, Christian Brothers High School with Patrick Cahill, Grace Coletti, Zachary Dong, Ethan Fung, Madison Martin, Alexander Sanchez, Logan Tiska, and Will Tushinsky, coached by Mary Bowers. The fourth highest scoring team from the 2021 competition is the fourth place team, Pleasant Grove High School, Aiden Angoko, Catherine Bowie, Isabel Gracia, Caitlin Lamb, Victoria Ojukuwu, Troy Osborne, and Abigail Wagner, coached by Jerry Bander and Melinda Holy. We are, of course, very thankful for Safe Credit Union's continued sponsorship over the years. This year, they are once again providing scholarships for the third through first place teams. They will present a third place team scholarship in the amount of $100 to each member of the third highest scoring team. The bronze medal team from this year's competition is third place team, Folsom High School, Haley Capicelli, Alice Gao, Erica Huang, Manvir Candola, Olivia Langbin, Caitlin Lee, Kayla Jaden Pilar, and Luke Tanton Tran, coached by Melinda Wilson and Ryan Peterson. Each member of the second place team will receive a Safe Credit Union second place team scholarship in the amount of $200. The silver medal team from this year's competition is second place team, Bella Vista High School, Susanna Ball, Brianna Bonight, Anthony Lamb, Caprice Leach, Aaron Lee, Evelyn Nash, Jax Owens, Priya Shaw, and Chloe Van Sickle, coached by Genevieve Americk and Jenny Chang. Each member of the first place team will receive a Safe Credit Union first place team scholarship in the amount of $400. It's with pride that we announce the winning team whose members will represent all Sacramento County decathletes at the California Academic Decathlon in March of this year. Our Sacramento champion team is the first place team, Vista Del Lago High School, Tatiana Ahola, Jaslyn Hawk, Ashna Kambampati, Rena Liu, Roseman Peng, Catherine Peterson, Shana Raman, Nibrithi Sudhir Kumar, and Julia Zhang, coached by Brianna Willis. It has been a great opportunity uh, here online to offer recognition and awards for all of these decathletes, all of the hard work that they put in this year. We congratulate all of the schools, the coaches, and the participants. I now turn the program back over to Craig Irish. Thank you, Kevin, for serving as our Master of Ceremonies for this year's awards. I normally present you with a t-shirt, but since we're not in person, I guess I'll have to mail you one. I wanna congratulate our championship team, Vista Del Lago, for your accomplishments this year and wish you the best at the state competition that's coming up virtually in March. We typically learn the theme for each year's competition sometime in March, so I'm hoping we'll learn that here in the next few weeks. And we look forward to next year's academic decathlon competition and hope that we can all be back together in person. I hope you all have a good evening and thank you for coming tonight.